I don't talk before coffee. The coffee's doing its trick. So the first thing I do every morning is go to the YouTube channel, check out the analytics, see how the videos are doing. Also answer any questions people might have or reply to any trolls. <laughs> this is a fun part of my day. And it's amazing the broad range of comments you get. The full spectrum. Some people absolutely hate the videos. Some people absolutely love them. Some people tell you how stupid you are for catching such small fish. Other people congratulate you for catching so many fish. It just, it just runs the gamut. Like this guy said, enjoy your videos, keep it up. Great, thanks. Those are the kind of comments you like to get. Will do. Thanks for watching. This guy said, very interesting info. I'm gonna try lighter jig heads next time. That's in response to the pool video showing how much better soft plastics look when fished under corks with light jig heads. You'll be glad you did. All right, so that's the end of the YouTube comments. So now my day really begins. It's Monday morning. I shot a couple of videos on Thursday. I worked on one of them all day Friday. I already got that posted. That's the one about how to care for your fish. And so now I'm starting on the next one. My son Joel and I went fishing for speckled trout, also for bass. He caught several trout on topwater baits. So it's gonna be a fun video to put together. So editing a video is a long, slow, painstaking process that involves scrubbing through hours and hours of video to find the stuff that's most useful, most relevant that you really want to include in your video. You really have to look at every second again to find the stuff that you want to use. All right, as I mentioned, we're fishing topwaters. Listen to this explosion, hopefully you can hear it. This is Joel, he's throwing a topwater bait, I'm throwing a jerk bait, but listen to this hit on top. <laughs> you got it? Yes, I got it. All right, he's hooked up. This episode of Marshman Masson brought to you by Puglia Sporting Goods. All right, this is some of the stuff that people never see. When I go out fishing for these videos, it's very, very important to get a good thumbnail. Thumbnail is the little image that appears when you promote the video. So when a decent fish comes over the gunnel, everything stops, and I go shoot those pictures. Okay. Ah, 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 dude. All right. Ready? Nah, no. hold it. Give me more tail. There you go. Okay. Hold it over here, like right here. And give me more tail if you can. Now when I'm scrubbing like this, pulling video clips down, it's very, very rough. It's just having a lot on the margins. A lot on the front side, a lot on the back side. Then after I scrub everything, get it all pulled down into the timeline, I go back around and start fine tuning it. All right, so it's 9.07 a.m. and I just got completed doing the rough scrub on this video. Now I've got, uh, let's see, 43 minutes. Look at this. 43 minutes of video. That's way too long. So I gotta cut a lot out of this and fine tune it and crop it down to, I like a video to be about 15 to 20 minutes. Sometimes I'm over that, sometimes I'm under, but that's kind of the ballpark that I shoot for. So now the fun begins. That's really the hard work of going through everything and scrubbing. It took me, uh, took me four hours to do. Now I like this part. This is when you actually put the video together. All right, so four hours sitting here doing the same thing. Kind of get a little bleary eyed, so I really need a little bit of a break. So this is a good opportunity for me to take you around my office and show you where I work. All right, so my office, Kind of doubles as the uh, workout room. I try and get a workout in five days a week, every weekday, usually succeed. Also, it's kind of my trophy room. It's the only turkey I've ever taken in my hunting career. I haven't done a ton of turkey hunting, maybe five hunts or so. Here's some of the bucks I shot over the years. These lower two were taken by Joel when he was just a little guy, eight to 10 years old. The top five I've taken. And this pelt here is a bobcat that my daughter, my middle daughter, shot in Washington Parish about 10 years ago or so. I tanned that hide myself, and I gotta tell you, if somebody offered me $1,000 to tan another hide, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> it is not easy at all, but really, really like that bobcat hide. This is my maternal grandfather. He's the one who took me fishing as a kid every weekend. My father was not a fisherman at all, but this guy was eaten up with it. He built Higgins boats and also served in World War II. He was in the Battle of the Bulge. I spent a lot of time in Belgium while he was there. Just an absolutely fantastic human being. The World War II generation, of course, is the greatest generation and he was 
head and shoulders above anybody else, in my opinion, in that generation. This is a redfish that's maybe 22 inches or so. My wife caught it, it's got some sentimental value. She caught it back when we were in college. Not a big fish, but again, it's got some sentimental value. This is my prize possession. This is an eight pound, eight ounce speckled trout that I caught in, what was that, 2002, June 10th, 2002 in Calcasieu Lake, Southwest Louisiana. Just an amazing, amazing, amazing fish. And then here is the biggest bass I've ever caught in my life. 9.42 pounds, caught in 1995 on Toledo Bend. Caught this fish with Jack Haynes. Jack is a former Bassmaster Classic winner. He won back in the 70s, I think 75. All right, take you around here. And then this is the biggest buck I've ever shot. I took this uh, two years ago in Illinois. I'm actually heading out Thursday of this week for my annual Illinois hunt. This is my fireplace. It's nice having a fireplace in your office, particularly in winter months. I light this thing almost every day. Got a bunch of firewood in the garage that I stockpile every year for the next year. Another picture of my maternal grandfather. And my first mallard duck, shot probably in 95, 96. And here's my desk. Got pictures of my kids. And uh, an Associated Press Sports Editor's Award from 2015. Sadly, all but one of the people listed on this award are no longer with the Times Picky The Only one still there is Jeff Duncan. Oh, and look at this. Tarpon scales from the one and only tarpon that I caught last August. It was a beast. 140 pound fish. And that's about it. That's my office. This is where I work. Nothing fancy, but it's nice and cozy. This episode of Marshman Masson brought to you by Matrix Shad and by Cito New Orleans and by Versamax Quartz and by Death Grip Jig Heads. All right, I'm six minutes in. I got the video six minutes of video time in. I got the video down to 39 minutes, got a long ways to go in chopping this thing up. But one of the bad things about getting up so early, and I start video production days at 5 a.m. It's by 11 o'clock, you're starving to death. Right now, I'm starving to death. And I'm really feeling like Chinese. There's a great Chinese restaurant called Trey Inn right around my house, so. It's not raining yet, which I'm really surprised. I know there's a lot of rain really close. I'm gonna try and beat it, run out, grab some Chinese to go, and come back and get to work. So let me make that call. Trey, I made it up. Yeah, so I need a place to go order, please. Okay, can I get your name? Yeah, it's for Todd. Okay, what can I get for you? Uh, I just need a lemon chicken lunch special. Okay, that should be ready in about 10 minutes. All right, sounds good, thank you. Ready in 10 minutes, it'll take me close to 10 minutes to get there, so let's go get some lunch. My wife locked me in. She must love me. Wow, it really warmed up out here. So I live about three miles from a lake called Lake Pontchartrain. It's technically a big saltwater bay but it's only got two passes that feed into it from the Gulf. So it's really more like a lake than a bay. And it's got some legendarily good speckled trout fishing. Also a whole lot of redfish and other species as well. But it used to hold some really big trophy trout. In fact, it's produced several fish that are in Louisiana's top 10, but that hasn't been true in recent years. Really across Louisiana, our trophy trout fishing is kind of in a downward cycle. Back in the late 90s and early 2000s, it was really, really good. That of course is when I caught that eight pound, eight ounce trout that I've got on my wall that I caught in Calcasieu Lake. It was in 2002, it was during that really, really good run. And we'll have more good runs in the future. These things just move in cycles. It's 67 degrees right now. We had a really cold weekend. And definitely the coldest weather of the year is coming tonight gonna stick around for the next three or four days classic Chinese restaurant look with the obligatory koi pond I don't see him today
Man, it smells good enough to eat in the car. Six fortune cookies. That might be a little bit of overkill. But man, does that look good or what? Trust me, it's better than it looks. Lemon chicken. That's some good stuff. All right, so they gave me six fortune cookies. I gotta eat one of them, right? All right, a little courtesy will go a long way. <laughs> Definitely true. In certain situations. All right, I'm gonna save that. All right, it's time to get back to the video. Been away from it for too long. Got a lot of work left to do on it before I can publish it. Oh, and the, uh, the rain has definitely arrived. It's nasty outside. All right, so I just finished making my second pass through this video, and I've got it cut down to 25 minutes, 39 seconds. Still a little long. I'd really like to cut about eight minutes out of it. So now I have to make a third pass and see what I can find that I can chop out. This is when it gets brutal. All right, my, <laughs> my latest hatchet job got it down to 23 minutes, 33 seconds. Still a lot longer than I'd like, but man, I was really brutal on that cut, or at least I feel like I was. So it's now 3.30, I've been at this for 10 hours, and I'm feeling definitely pretty bleary-eyed. So what I like to do when that's the case is go get a workout in. Kind of get you refocused, get you re-energized. Find the worst thing you can do when you're feeling kind of lethargic and just a little bit out of it. It's kind of give in to that. So I like to, uh, to exercise in those moments. It's kind of ironic. It seems like a, a paradox. But for me at least, exercise gives me energy. So that's what I'm going to do. It definitely worked. I feel revived and more energetic than I did before I worked out. It always happens. But I gotta have my after workout drink. <laughs> we'll see if any of you drink this particular drink. My daughter got me hooked on these. I store them in my garage fridge. It's not a gnarly barley milk porter, although those are delicious. I'll probably be drinking one of those later. But right now, it's a LaCroix. So I know a lot of people hate LaCroix. <laughs> Funniest comment I saw about it was somebody said it tastes like my foot fell asleep. And I totally get it. The first time I drank one, I thought it was awful. I think I took a sip and threw it away. But I try to limit my sugar intake. And once your palate changes from not taking in so much sugar, stuff like this begins to taste a lot better. <sighs> Will make you burp. And I know it's a lot better for you than any type of soda, soft drink, anything like that. All right, so it's now 4.30 and my work day is drawn to a close. I've got a few little other nitpicky things to do, but usually I try to knock off around 4.30, 5 o'clock and cook dinner and get that ready for my wife and for Joel when they get home. My wife and I have a deal. I cook and she cleans. Now I try and keep things clean as I go, but I'd much rather cook and she'd much rather clean. So it really works. Plus, I'm a much better cook. <laughs> it's not even close. <laughs> So what I'll do to complete this video is get Joel to watch it when he comes home. He's a great sounding board. He'll catch things that kind of just ran by me because I've gotten too familiar with the content. So we'll rehash it and then I'll finish the editing process and probably upload it to YouTube tomorrow morning. All right, the nitpicky stuff is done and now it is time to cook dinner. And fortunately, we got a good dinner planned for tonight. <laughs> it's Monday. The video I worked on today, I actually shot on Thursday. And on that day, I also shot a video on how to take care of your fish, which I'll link to here. And fortunately, I took good care of my fish, stored them in a bowl in my refrigerator, covered with ice. So this is only what? Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, four days later. So those fish are gonna be perfectly fine, gonna be delicious to eat tonight. I'm gonna make a New Orleans classic dish called Trout Meniere. Uh, it's one of my favorites. My family loves it. It's something I do a whole lot with fish. I'll kind of take you quickly through how I make it. Uh, and maybe you can duplicate it at home. 
Uh, very, very easy to make. Let's uh, first go get the uh, go get the fish. All right, so we need a couple of plates, which we have. Also, we need a bowl. All right, now I'm gonna put a pan on the stove, get that going, just on, on low heat until I'm ready to start throwing some fillets on there. Old Magnolite from back in the day, can't beat these things. All right, I'm getting some flour. All right, I put flour on one of the plates. I don't have a ton of fish left, so just about that amount. That amount of flour, about yay. Seafood seasoning. All right, today I like changing seasoning up constantly so it, so it all tastes different. This is more than season all, which is uh, a seasoned salt. It's really good. And you want to put a lot in your flour. I mean a lot, a lot. So that flour is really going to dilute it. So I put about that much. So I mix this all up. Okay, now into the bowl, I'm going to pour some milk. So you're not going to believe how easy this is and how incredibly good it tastes. All right, so I got my pan going. Turn it up a little bit. All right, so this is very, very important. You don't want to batter your fish. Somebody's here. I think it's Joel. What's up, bro? What's up? That was a pretty good ETA. I said 515. 5.15 and you yeah, nailed it. Exactly. 5.15. All right, I'm making trout manure. Yo, favorite. All right, so as I was saying, you don't want to batter your fish until you're ready to throw it in the pan because the breading will just kind of come off. It doesn't hold onto the fillets. So I'm going to get a side going because really I'm close to, uh, to throwing these fillets in. All right, this is a staple for us just because it's really so easy and they're very, very good to eat. But this is uh, Broccoli Normandy, sold from Sam's in these big four packs. Uh, you steam them in the bag, throw them in the microwave, six minutes later, they're ready to go. So... Uh, I'm probably about six minutes from having this fish ready, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in. All right, this is very, very important. First thing you wanna do is dip the filet into the flour. Take it right out of the bag, dip it into the flour. So I'm gonna coat it on both sides with flour. This is my seasoned flour. And then I'm going to dip it into the milk and then I'm gonna dip it back in the flour. That first coating of flour kind of makes the, gives the milk something to stick to. It helps that second coating to hold on there. Then I'm gonna take it and put it on my other plate. All right, so I just keep doing that with every filet. This is a classic New Orleans dish served at many, many restaurants in the French Quarter. Been making this for years. It's never not absolutely delicious. Oh, it's, it's always delicious. Absolutely. And this is something that really works better with some bigger fillets. I don't keep really big trout, but you get a nice uh, 16, 17 inch trout, this is going to be perfect for that. And my pan is of a size that I can usually fit about four fillets without it being too crowded. Sometimes only three, depending on how big they are. If I caught the fish, usually three. If Joel caught them, I can easily fit four. <laughs> now the bad thing is, this can get a little messy, but as I mentioned earlier, I do the cooking, my wife does the cleaning. <laughs> Actually, I try to keep things as clean as I can. All right, we're gonna throw a little olive oil in the pan. Joel, come hold this camera. Now, a true manier would not have olive oil, but if you don't use olive oil, it's a good chance you're gonna burn your butter. You don't wanna do that. All right, this dish uses an absolute ton of butter. You know, butter obviously used to get a very, very bad rap, but it's, it's not nearly as unhealthy as, as people used to think it was. Uh, so I do cook with a lot of butter. That's why everything I cook is really good. All right, so you want your heat on about medium high, maybe medium, between medium and medium high. <laughs> All right, we're just gonna lay our fillets in, flat side down first, very important. 
they will shrink a little bit while they're cooking, but there's not a whole lot of fat in these fish, so not gonna shrink a whole lot. Okay, and while those are browning, we're gonna go ahead and do our next fillets. Now, I only kept eight fillets for this because Joel and I can each eat three, and my wife will just eat two. And I had a big fish fry last night, so I used all the rest of them for that. So I've only, I'm only gonna have two batches. All right, these are about ready to flip. Look, we'll hold it, Joel. So that's about how they're gonna look on top. Good friend of mine, Tenny Flynn, who's a chef at GW Fins, said when cooking fish, you kinda use the pancake analogy. You cook it two thirds of the time on one side, one third on the other. Yeah, so that's about a perfect crust on that fish. That's just absolutely beautiful. That's what you want. Golden brown. There's our four fillets. So fish is most of the time overcooked rather than undercooked. It, it's got very little connective tissue, so it cooks very, very quickly. You don't have to cook it very long, but I love getting a good sear. That's why you want to kind of cook it at a little bit higher temperature. I really wish I could share this with you because your mind will be blown how good this is. If you were eating this, you would think you were eating at the finest New Orleans restaurant. And it's so easy to make. You can definitely do this at home. All right, round two, we're gonna put more butter in. All right, let's get our fillets. Now I'll tell you, this trout manier, you literally only want to make it with speckled trout. It does not taste nearly as good with redfish, bass, flounder, anything else. I don't know why. It's just magical with speckled trout. That's the fish you want to use to make this, preferably unfrozen speckled trout. I feel like Rachel Ray on 30 minute meals because that's literally all this, uh, all the time this takes. All right, so we put our vegetables into this handy uh, measuring cup. What are we putting in there? More butter, a little more <laughs> butter and some salt. Stir that up, voila, veggies. Neither Joel nor I eats cauliflower, so we pick out the carrots and the broccoli. My wife eats all the cauliflower. All right, so the second batch is about ready. We're gonna go ahead and flip them. Probably a little bit past perfection, but still not bad. All right, and the next step involves Worcestershire, say that, Worcestershire sauce, five times fast. Worcestershire sauce. Now, I really like Lee Perrins. It's by far the best, but we've got this best choice, so it'll have to do. Also, hot sauce, definitely my favorite, Crystal. I'm gonna see if I can dig up a lemon or a lime. All right, I got a lemon. Perfect. All right, so I just took my final fillets off. Very important, you turn the fire off because you don't want that butter that's in there to burn. All right, now this is uh, gonna make some of you cringe, but I'm gonna take about yay amount of butter. Not that little one, that big one. I'm gonna put that in my pan. All right, I'm gonna take this Worcestershire sauce. Use a fairly good amount. I really like Worcestershire sauce. It kind of makes the dish. Joel cut my lemon for me. Take some crystal hot sauce, not a ton. I mean, if you really like spicy food, you can put a lot. Put about that much. I don't like very spicy food. That's why I like crystal, it's really, really tasty. Man, it smells so good. And then finally, some lemon. All right, now, now for the fun part. Give me that spoon. All right, being the nice guy that I am, I'm gonna make Joel's. All right, so you just ladle some of that sauce. Not too much. Maybe a spoon's worth on each filet. If you don't like that, there's something wrong with you, trust me. Joel, some broccoli and carrots. All right, dinner is done. It's 541. And I'm a poet and I didn't know it. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, Joel's gonna sample it for us. I already know what he's gonna say. Delicious. Best ever? Best ever. Best ever, I knew it. All right, now I'm gonna eat, and I can't wait. All right, my wife's on her way home. 
Like, she's very, very close to being home. And trust me, she's not going to want to be videoed. So that makes it even more fun. Man, good. For dessert, you're going to have five fortune cookies. Here we go. Hey, honey. Hey. How are you? Fine. How was work? Let me fix your plate. Sure. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> you ready to eat? I'm not even right there. Turn the freaking camera off. This is not about me. Alright, I gotta turn the camera off. <laughs> so, honey, how'd you like to try one year? Best ever? Yep. And why'd you only eat one filet? I'm full at night. Why? Because I don't like to eat a lot at night. <laughs> that makes one of us. Alright, well hopefully you enjoyed the video. It was very, very weird for me to record everything I did in a day. But so many of you asked for it, I was happy to do it. It's a lot of work. I mean, it's a lot more work than people realize, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. There's nothing else I'd want to be doing. Well, if you like to give it a thumbs up and definitely subscribe to Marshman Masson on YouTube. And until next time, if I don't see you in my office, I'll see you in the marsh. <laughs> if I don't see you in the marsh, I'll see you on Marshman Masson.